Friday, May 1st. Yes, we finally got through that month of April, and uh, hopefully life's getting a little bit better for you out there. Uh, today, we are going to be uh, interviewing uh, the one and only Henry Clifford, uh, owner of Livewire, an integration firm out of uh, Richmond, Virginia. And uh, he is also uh, one of the co-founders of Parasol. So uh, we're going to bring him in here in just a minute. Let me jump over to Facebook just to make sure that, in fact, we are live. I already see Chris. Chris is saying, I see you. Hey, Chris. Thanks for watching, bud. Appreciate you doing that. All right. Let me see here. Let's see if we are live. See if technology is going to be behaving. It's funny, Facebook, if you aren't like live on the show, you can't see. There you go. We are live. Okay. Well, uh, we have finally uh, gotten through another month of quarantine. And uh, I can tell you life here uh, personally for us uh, is it's kind of maybe you're all are experiencing this and that uh, your weeks are flying by and uh, you know, is it Monday? Is it Sunday? I don't know. It's kind of hard to tell the difference sometimes. Um, I, I am happy to say that I've, we've been getting some really positive feedback from uh, you folks watching live and, and listening uh, to the podcast are the show has been really see, been seeing extraordinary week over week growth in terms of uh, downloads for the podcast. Uh, so I'm actually going to share with you real quick. Uh, if you have not already, go to your favorite podcast platform. I know uh, if you're watching live, that means you're in Facebook right now. But uh, uh, a lot of our uh, ongoing consumption is actually happening in the podcast format. So uh, go to your favorite program. I know that I use my uh, my Apple uh, iPhone and I uh, I subscribe. I'm always on the hunt for for new podcasts. I, I particularly and personally love podcasts. It's it's really invigorated my uh, interest in learning and my ability to learn and consume information. So if you haven't discovered podcasts. Uh, a couple of days ago, I interviewed uh, uh, the gentleman from uh, Beacon out of Ohio, and uh, I think it was Rob, and he actually was brand new to podcast. And so I took him through a bit of the introduction of how to sign up uh, and how to check out different content. And he was uh, he was giddy. He was as giddy as I was four years ago when I discovered the format. So definitely uh, check that out. Um, yeah. And then this is uh Chris, Chris says, uh, did April just have 300 days? I don't know, Chris, but I I'm down with you, man. It's, it is, uh, definitely, uh, it's been challenging, interesting times here in quarantine, but we're going to get through it. I promise you that. And, uh, we'll all be stronger on the other side of that. So without further ado, let me go ahead and bring in our guest, Henry. Uh, from both Parasol and Livewire. Henry, how are you, sir? Great, Ron. Thanks for having me on the show. So you are one of the few guests that are, in fact, a returning guest. And uh, I don't know if you recall the date, but I, I had you on here uh, almost exactly two years ago on episode 40. Time, time flies. I feel like when, when you're on a second time, did, is that kind of like SNL where you, you start to get a recurring character or something? Exactly. Well, we're going to run through our SNL skits a little bit later in the show, but yeah, exactly. It's, it's a thing. It's a, th and we're still here, which is, you know, maybe a surprise to, to some, certainly maybe a surprise to me, but we're still doing this. Love it. And who is that beautiful angel I hear in the background? Well, actually, the beautiful angel you hear is my 13-year-old son, William, who's uh, sure <laughs> he's he's rocking it out, and uh, uh, he's so they're both so my oldest, my 13-year-old Will, he's they're doing they're doing their vocal lessons right now in the house, so 
That's kind of fun because earlier Quinn, Quinn was singing. So it was in the seventh grade. So he's in that weird point where his voice is about to voice change. Voice is changing. But, yeah. Yeah. And he can funny? still hit those high notes until he, he can. can. He can. Yep. Now, uh, I'm curious when you say uh, music lessons, is this part of the homeschooling? Is this part of the, the school that he goes to? Or is this tied to church? Or where are the music lessons coming in? Well, we were, my wife and I both are, we love, we like to sing and we met singing in an acapella group in college. So our kids like to sing. And so we found this, this teacher who was available. Uh, so there's nothing to do with school. Just thought it'd be a fun thing to do. They're, they're both supposed to be in a play this spring when the play was canceled. So we, we, it's totally voluntary, but this guy was available over again. So uh, virtual, virtual music lesson so new new for the coronavirus so it's just it's it's it just worked out that is that's cool well i my, we do some uh extracurricular uh, uh classes with my son my son's 11 i know i i took some heat because it was a recent show where i was talking about my son max and i forgot how old he was and so now i'm telling he's 11 i know how old my son is i know the year he was born there's no confusion um, but yeah, so he's, he's been doing this whole virtual thing. How have you and your family been adapting to quarantine life? What's, what's been going on there? It's, it's interesting. And, and I want to first by, start by saying, I know there's a lot of people out there who, uh, everybody's experiencing different levels of, of, of pain, discomfort and, and, and all sorts of different scenarios. So, um, for, for us, uh, I feel like we're, we're doing okay. I, that I feel like as humans are very adaptable. Kids are very adaptable. I mean, for them, they don't really understand what was because their their rear view mirror only goes back a few years. So I, I think a lot of it's just our own, our own drama as adults uh, and our own adaptability to change. And I feel like, certainly I'm sure you can relate, Ron, like as an entrepreneur, <laughs> you sort of change rod shotgun every day of the week. So it's 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 just just something else to adapt to but that said um every yeah the kids seem to be doing okay uh my my, mo- my mother-in-law she lives with us she helps with the kids and that's that's going great my wife's doing okay she's working remotely we're spending more time together as a family uh so while i again i don't mean to sound Cal, uh, sort of unfeeling about the folks who are, are not having a good go of it, but I mean the the, the Cliffords are 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 doing okay. Uh, and um, how but, many li- how many little ones do you have at home? It feels like more, but there's three. There's, <laughs> there's three, and and it's it's yeah, thirteen year old boy, and then two girls, eleven and six, and it's you can tell when they haven't had their daily dose of exercise because they start spinning up a little bit start fact, bouncing off walls. yeah oh yeah and i've got these on my door i've got these sort of pasted messages from days prior where there was some really urgent thing they needed from me in the middle of a maybe an interview <laughs> like dad can i use the scooter right i really now? need to can know I, dad right yeah, now can, can i play in traffic right now <laughs> dad i mean i asked me because I'm the weak link, right? I say right. yes, and then later, I, mom's I say already yes. said no three times. Yeah, I say yes to nothing. It's always ask your mom. Yeah, ask your mom. That that is that's funny. Now, yeah, I see you there in your home office. How's home office life for you? How are you digging it? Is that normal for you? Were you doing home officing before, or were you mostly in the live wire office, or what was your normal before, and what is it now? I spent so many years in a home office with this almost ashamed of my home office because people wouldn't take me seriously because they said, Oh, well, you're self-employed. Like you have cancer. And, <laughs> and so, so, so I quested for years and years to have this office building. So I have, I have the office building where there's an office over there. And, that, and so as a result, I haven't worked out of this office in, in years, but, sure. um, but it's, it's, it's sort of like going home. It's going home. It's, it's macaroni and cheese. It's very comfortable, um, except I have a building over there 
where the AC and the electricity and things are running. And, and uh, so it's okay. And, and thanks to all the, the technology, I, I sit down here and log in and it looks the same as, as, as it did when I'm across town at, at my office. So I'd, I'd say it's indistinguishable. What are you, I want to talk, you, you have two different hats. Uh, well, you, you have a lot more than two, but you have two hats and that is the live wire hat and you have the parasol hat. And so I want to talk about both sides of the business. Um, and so let's do live wire first. What are you, what are you seeing out there? Right? So there's integrators watching and listening and, uh, there's varying levels of challenges around the country. Some markets are wide open and they've never been busier. Others are on full lockdown. They furloughed their entire teams and they don't know when the end, they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel yet. Um, what is your reality right now at Livewire there? And you're in Richmond, Virginia. Yeah. So we have been classified as an essential business, mainly because we do a lot of life safety, security, and, and those sorts of things. And then we, we have a commercial side where we do a lot of the, the uh, small, small office technology. And so because of this remote work and life safety uh, kind of uh, thrust in our organization, it, that, that side of the business has actually grown. And, and we've done things like added virtual consultations and virtual service calls to our uh, to our website so that somebody can click and just and schedule just right right there and those are services that we hadn't offered if um, i show your website now will i be able to net will you be able to navigate me there yeah absolutely uh right. hopefully, hopefully to... it's yeah so hopefully it's up and running <laughs> i didn't tell uh, you that in advance let, let, uh, let, let, let's hope so there's gonna be some splaining so sure. there we go so yeah, so if you click, I think it's book appointment there at the on the top. You see, we got our COVID nineteen statement about you know what that we wear, all sorts of things. So yeah, so so I, I, we we had this little page done where you can pick your little service here, and it pulls up the calendar. And, and we had a booking calendar like this before, but we just didn't. We weren't leading with virtual or touch free consultations. So. Um, Anyway, it, it's just an example of, of things that we've done to pivot quickly that don't really cost us anything, but that yeah. say to our customers that, hey, we're we're here and not only we're here, but we're here um, uh, kind of where you want to be met. So that's that that's the, 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 these are simple things that we've uh, that, we, that we've tried to implement there. Um, others. I've been just saying to our customers, hey, uh, if you don't want us in your house, we're not going to be in your house. If you want us in your house, that's great. Uh, we'll, we're going to wear masks and we're going to wear gloves and 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 we're going to do the things that uh, we're supposed to do to socially distance. Uh, saying to our employees, uh, look, we care about you. We care about your families. Um, if you don't want to go on a job site, don't go on the job site. Uh, if you've been exposed to somebody, you need to go into quarantine. And just letting them know that you know, I've heard okay. these. Yeah, I've heard these interviews in the last few days where it's like almost like uh, like the jungle that Upton Sinclair book about the meat packing plants in Chicago. And you hear these poor people and they're working at the Tyson plant or the the whatever plant. And and uh, and they'll say, Yeah, I don't that they'll say we don't feel like they care about us. They just want to make money. And so I feel like for guys like, for, for guys like me and, uh, and other entrepreneurs out there, the worst thing we ever want to think that our employees are saying about us is that, that we're not putting them first. And, and so I really take that seriously. You know, we've had a bunch of the, these all, all hands, uh, get togethers online but I don't think there's such that there's such thing as, as communicating too much. It seems like no matter how much I communicate, you can always be communicating more. And there's always, always be these, more. Right. And and there's always these vacuums of information. And and I was just the nature of, of human, you know, human nature. But I mean, we've had a few scares where employees have said, 
so-and-so met a guy who met a guy who knew a guy who knew how to say the word Corona. Right. So, and that's led to these, these uh, scares where we didn't, we were sort of stress testing our own policies and, uh, and it, it's definitely pretty, it gets pretty real pretty fast. Uh, when you hear that one of your folks, uh, was exposed to somebody who may have had the, the coronavirus. And so we've, we've had a few scares and knock on wood, I'm going to knock on everything. Right. It's a virus. I mean, it's so one, yeah. And, and or we've, had, you know, we've Don't, had nobody this. sick so far. Your team so far is, is, mm. has managed to go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I don't want to jinx it. And then we've also had uh, customer scenarios where, uh, where, where there may have been somebody in the house who had, who had the virus. Right. Uh, we, I think we were called into one job site where, um, we were told, well, they, they're quarantined on the second floor, so you guys can work on the first floor. And our operations manager was <laughs> like, no, 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 <laughs> no thank you. And the, I think the justification was, we'll pass well, on the, that job. Yeah. And I think the justification, well, the other guys are, well, okay, that's nice. But so we're taking a very human, humanistic approach where even if it's an inconvenience for us, even if it means we're not, we're not making money. I mean, that's not what's important. It's, you know, it's, it's protecting the lives and the health of our, of our families, uh, whether it's employees, whether it's customers, whatever. And it's just the, the, the karmic energy of doing things any differently to me is just abhorrent. Abhorrent. Uh, I, I, what is the situation in Virginia? I'm from Virginia. I'm from Newport news. That's where I was born and raised. My family lives in uh, my mom and dad and brother and sister live up in Winchester, Virginia. Mm -hmm. What, what is the state of uh, COVID in Virginia? I I've admittedly on every podcast I tell, I don't watch the news anymore. So <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm just focusing on what's right in front of me. So what is yeah. going on there? Well, I feel like, the the behaviors that we're seeing here uh, seem definitely uh, like they're oriented around keeping things where they are, which is they they seem to be in a good place. Meaning, there's I think there's only a couple thousand cases in the whole state, and and it's a pretty big state. So uh, I, I'd say where you know where we see it now is that that's continuing. It's not spiking, but I mean it doesn't take much to spike. I mean I'm looking at the the top, you know, 15, it looks like, oh yeah. So there's 17,000 cases. I think there was a thousand, you know, a thousand cases, um, yesterday. And it looks like there's been, you know, 500 deaths or something. So we're, we're not really, we're not one of the biggies, but what it doesn't take much. So I'd say that that's probably the biggest danger is, um, uh, one of the analogies I guess I could use would be I, I like to fly little airplanes. And um, one, one of the things my flight instructor said, yeah, the thing that kills pilots is complacency. Yeah, you know, is is this sort of idea that uh, that that hey, I've got this. And so a lot of the the deaths in general aviation, you actually will see uh, they're not guys like me who only have a couple hundred hours. It's it's pilots who have maybe a couple thousand hours who have stopped kind of being, being sort of vigilant. And, I, and, and that's what I worry about a little bit is we as humans, uh, it's not in our nature to stay sort of on high alert for these like sort of long periods of time where everything's important all the time, constant vigilance for, for months. It's just, yeah, it's so I think we're going to we're going to see a little bit of a little bit of peaking and troughing just because of human nature. You see, uh, I, I, I am on, on the, the social media channels and I see people talking about, look, our state hasn't had any deaths or hasn't had many deaths. See, it was all made up. And it's like what they're not getting is there aren't so many deaths because people have been taking extra measures to distance yeah. and yeah. To quell it. It's like you're doomed if you do and you're doomed if you don't. And yeah. uh, it it is definitely a curious time for humanity uh, on, on planet Earth. Um, what do you see happening 
for your business? What are you seeing right now? What what are what is the landscape? It's May first, two thousand twenty. What are you seeing in terms of inquiries around uh, you know the biz dev business development side of the equation? And is it is it flat? Is it down? And what what type of inquiries are you getting? Is it for like the we want to say home network should be in demand right now. We want to say home entertainment should be in demand right now. Is that what you're seeing? Yes. Uh, we, we're we seeing our outside business uptick uh, uh, a great bit. So outdoor TV, outdoor living, outdoor sound. We do outdoor lighting. The, all those businesses are are up. The, the, the services businesses that we have, whether it's security monitoring, so as a as an example folks may want are, are interested in hardening their their physical security because of the whole home yeah you know, the home fortress concept where they might want to check up i just had a conversation with a guy the other day who has a bunch of uh of, of properties with us and he wanted to not only upgrade his security systems but upgrade the monitoring but also add the 24 seven remote support piece, which we offer as a, as a parasol dealer. So this was, by the way, this was his idea, not, this wasn't. So he reached this. out to you yeah, to have he, this conversation. He said, I, I'm ready. I get it. Let's do that. It makes sense. I don't want you guys in my place. I, I want, I want it to be done remotely so that, that, that's just that's anecdotal, but it's pretty. That's a pretty typical sort of interaction, and uh, so a lot of it is is the the customer having a chance to marinate a little bit on some of the messaging, and then drawing their own conclusions, and then they're reaching out. the The outbound is something we're careful about because obviously, calling somebody up and saying, "Hey, Ron, it's Henry." <laughs> Does your network hey, suck? How about hey? I know you're just I know you're thinking about food, clothing, and shelter right now, but how about a big TV, right? So it's just <laughs> I mean, it's that's just, not that's not what's working for you. Yeah, you know, just I don't know. We workshopped it. It just I don't it, know. Didn't, it fell to the side. Didn't, didn't work out. So we with our sales team, we're sort of we're 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 definitely all about this messaging of sort of hey, we're here, etc. We've been using Vidyard, which is uh, that. The, this service where you can create a video message, drop it into the email and say, just it's, it's person to person. So with the whole vibe around, what is it? I, I forget what it is. 60, 70% of communication is non nonverbal. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's over, it's over like 90% of communication is nonverbal. Oh it's yeah. Facial reactions and you know, yeah. body language. Yeah. And so for, for us, we're, we're thinking, okay, I don't want to just, necessarily cold call somebody out of the bill like hey how's it going <laughs> just i mean people hate that stuff right so yeah, yeah. for us we we've, we've been creating these messages uh i sent one the other day to a specifier yeah hello uh yeah mrs smith so you recorded we, the video you yeah. looked into the computer yeah. talked to the person and then that gets sent in the email and it's custom there and the open rates are insane. Everybody opens the thing and you can see how much of it they actually viewed. And so you can kind of go, All right. oh, now, now you've good. really struck my curiosity. So this vid, is vid, vid yard, vid yard, V I D Y A Y A R D vid yard is so cool because if, I mean, I wouldn't, nobody, nobody defaults to prospecting necessarily. Right. So, for us, yeah, there's legit reasons to prospect, but there's um, there's also you know ways to do it and ways not to do it. With Vidyard, it's kind of cool because it the email doesn't just get deleted because it's this personal message and and little tricks are something like I could write, for example, as at the beginning of the the video, I could do this where it says your name. Well, you're gonna open that video. And it, you know, I I see car car dealers doing this stuff. This sounds when, like a ninja trick, man. This sounds I, really powerful. I don't know. I stole it from Marcus Sheridan, who is 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 somebody I I really think 
very highly of. He wrote this sort of they ask you answer book and talks about writing content online to answer customer questions. And he he did one. Of, he did a very sim, similar webinar to what you did about a month ago where he, he's he's talking about same same kind of thing. Hey, what what do we do now? Social yeah. distancing. Um, and so he talked about, yeah, smile, smile, sit up straight. Uh, use tools like Vidyard, you know, don't face into a light source. Um, just, basic, yeah, just home yeah, just, officing 101, selling yeah, just, from home 101. Yeah, just basic, just basic things. So, uh, so, and then, then the, and nobody's really, uh, so the attrition or the churn on our services business is, is pretty much non-existent right now. Nobody's canceling anything. Are you seeing cool. an uptick in clients now ready to sign up for that service plan that had been on the sideline? Yeah. So like that, that scenario I just gave you the other day, the, the guy greenlit seven, seven subscriptions in one, one little interaction, or we, we will, we sent out at the beginning of the coronavirus deal, like a month and a half ago, another email to our whole customer base. Hey, we're here. There's never been a better time to think about 24 seven remote support. Click here to sign up. Here's a coupon. And we, and we're giving it away for 90 days. So, and that, that led to a huge swath of, of subscribers. And so then we take those lessons in inside a live wire, anything that, that works in the test kitchen. And then, I go to my partners, Greg and Ted at Parasol, and and share those findings with with them, and then we're then able to communicate out to our two hundred. I think we're at two hundred fifty dealers or something right now. Two hundred fifty other integrators around the planet, which is kind of cool. Which is and, amazing. And we can share with them, hey, here here's what just worked inside our business, which is the same business that you guys are running. And so we can just share that story. And um, so for and those listening that don't know Parasol, they've heard it, they've heard the buzz. They don't know what it is. Give me the, the, the nickel description of the company. What is, what is, what is Parasol? It's so, the shirt you're wearing. So you guys yeah, sell t-shirts apparently, right? We, we are. Like I, mean, we they, are. <laughs> I mean, this is, it's a nice cotton poly blend. So and they can email you and get their own shirt. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, no, so necessity is the mother of invention. And uh, for a lot of years, we, we, we at Livewire, uh, we struggle with delivering support to our, to our customers. And, so we started a long time ago uh, putting in iHeeji, which is a remote support platform, which was later acquired by Control4. And we, we were installing their appliances in the home so we could, after we left, remotely troubleshoot and fix the customer system, and they would sign up for a, a subscription. And we were supposed to monitor that system for them 24 seven, 365, and, and remotely notify them if there was an issue. Uh, sounds great. Delivering on that promise is really, really tough when you're just one integration business. Uh, I'd say it's actually impossible. And so- A lot of the was, weight in that model, was it on the integrator to follow the, the, the process perfectly in order for the customer to get that outcome? Yeah, and, and keep in mind the integrator at that point is, is me, it's Livewire. And so- I'd, I'd say this went on for a few years where I'd, I'd say we were guilty of selling something we couldn't actually deliver. And uh, what I saw was we could sell it. Um, what I, the what customers I, wanted the promise. Customers wanted the promise. I also knew that as an integrator, I hated getting text messages from angry customers uh, at dinner time. Uh, I, I, I didn't like being bolted to my to my custom, angry customer t t support messages. It's so stressful. It is so stressful. And so this, this all led to this continuing, well, can we do it? How do we do it? How do we pay somebody to actually do this? What's the subscriber count we need to, in order to staff this and do this in-house? 
So really a lot of this came to a head where, um, you know, I, I, I ran into uh, Greg and Greg Simmons with Eagle Century and Ted Brumacamp with ETC and West Palm. These are very impressive uh, CE Pro 100 integrator folks. We, we, we know each other because we're all members of ProSource. We've known each other for years. And I, th I think it was the, I think it was uh, the CE Pro Summit in 2017, 2016, maybe. And for some, the timing around that moment had, was the remote support world was was getting ready to break open. Um, One Vision had debuted the prior year, and and Joey and I have known each other for a long time. And in fact, we sat down at breakfast. He was getting ready to launch. And I, I had shown him a concept that I had too, and they were they were at the same idea, and so we we've, we've kept tap you know we just kept in touch on that, and so he had launched, and 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 Greg and Ted and I um, got together and said, we we really should monitor each other's customers and maybe that could be a way of piloting this, this concept. And so um, by, by doing that, uh, we, we then started to uh, learn a lot about what worked and what didn't. What, what were some and, of the things that didn't work? Well, to begin with, we had to stand up a separate, separate network operations center, two of them actually, one in Richmond, one in Vegas. And, and, and the, the concept was very simple. If we had a new customer, we would, uh, we would give them their own 800 number that they could call, text, email, chat, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. The real trick was what would happen when it wasn't our own employees, when it wasn't Livewire's own employees answering the phone. Uh, the second that flipped, because integrators are very, uh, they're very territorial over their own customers. And you go, every, every one of us, we go, well, our, our, our customers, they're different. And right. they have these needs and you guys just don't understand. You're not going to be able to handle it. You know, so this is how we're thinking about, this is how I was thinking about Eagle Century and ETC. And they were th thinking the same thing as we were doing this. And it was great because we've been eating our own dog food the whole time and going through the pain. Uh, and the pain, the pain is, uh, as, as you all know, Ron, where there's pain, there's, there's business opportunity. So yep. we, we, I think up front, uh, learned very quickly that our customers really aren't as different as we th think they are, that everybody's got the same challenges. Uh, really it became about, we really needed to get a industry standardization uh, method going. And this is where my partner, Ted comes into play. Right? So he writes, he writes the first industry standardized system installation blueprint out there and has live wire, Eagle century and ETC follow that. So all our systems are installed the same way, labeled the same way they're sure. And, and this is flexible enough to support different brands, etc. But that enables us then to speak a common language when we're talking about these systems. And it also enforces good behaviors. In the security world, you'd never send in a monitoring agreement that just says outlet one, outlet two, outlet three. But yet in the AV world, we can get away with sometimes bad behavior around, around system labeling. And so, so Ted creates the, indus the industry's first system standardization, you know, installation blueprint. So that, that, that we learned very quickly. We needed that. So I, I'm going to admit I'm guilty. So in my closet over here is my network. And I had some friends uh, from the industry help me spec it out. And I've got a watt box in there from snap AV and I've got the dashboard on my computer. What do you think all the outlets are labeled? Outlet one outlet two. <laughs> It's completely worthless because yeah. I so, haven't labeled the actual pieces. I keep promising myself I'm going to do it one weekend. Well, this, so is the, this is the beautiful thing about 
uh, where we ended up because we could say to a, a potential parasol dealer, uh, cause they know this, they, you, you say to them, well, your installers, I'm sure are doing an amazing job and labeling all your systems perfectly. Uh, you trust that, or you could verify that by commissioning that system with parasol and, and our guy at parasol, they will, they will go, what the hell's outlet one? And so they're not leaving that job until it's, it's labeled properly. So is it, an integrator owner is is thinking this is the best thing since sliced bread because it's enforcing good, is that, good behavior. Is that thing you're describing right now, so logically I fully get it, is when, when you have – are you talking about the early years you would do this or you do this now? There's some sort of onboarding or discovery process where the documentation is vetted against reality on the job site. Is, we're, we're doing this today. We, we started doing it and, and it's just gotten better where obviously the commissioning was um, long, it took it took a long time. But now now it just eats, you know, it, as, as it keeps going along, it just gets faster and faster. And, and um, so, yeah, we still do it today where we're where we're there's the installer saying, hey, we're ready to bring this system online. And then our folks at Parasol are saying, okay, uh, well, let's, let's see, let's check it out. And so it's a really clean handoff. And I know for a fact, because I like what the, one of the groups that I'm involved in with Cedia, the Cedia groups program, we all sit around and talk about our companies. Well, I talked to enough integrators where I know that this is a struggle is, is I, I'm going to, I'm going to call myself last, out here, Henry. So Chris just threw a comment up. He says, show us, Ron. So I'm, I told you that I didn't label it. There it is. So this is my house. That's my rack over there. And sadly, this is entirely inadequate for anyone to service or to if something's locked up. I have this cool piece of gear that I can't use because I don't know what anything is. So yeah. you probably run into this quite a bit. Would do you not? I mean, as you're working with integrators around the country? Well, we do, and and immediately the when an, an integrator will will then say, Well, this is great. Uh, they they might even look at it as just a, a compliance piece where they're 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 just gonna turn on the parasol subscription program as as a means of internal compliance. Uh, never mind the recurring revenue or the peace of mind, you know, portion of it. So again, because we're eating our own dog food, because it made sense in our in within Livewire, we knew that that there had to be an, an audience for that, and and to some extent too, within ProSource, for example, our buddies, uh, the 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 CI Power Group, etc., had been making noises about this for a long time. And occasionally somebody would speak up and say, well, I, you know, maybe I'll do something. And yeah, well, if you do, I'll buy it from you. So it was it was just one of those scenarios where we we got enough momentum spun up to where we we did it and, and started doing it. But monitoring each other's customers to begin with was was how we sort of uh, begun it. And then we started we opened the, the net to our own folks uh, or our, our own like the pro source buying group folks. And then we've thrown the net wider and the whole vibe the, the, the entire time has been, Hey, tell you what, like come on board and help us make it better. Uh, so we have a dealer advisory council. We have a parasol certified dealer program. We have what's called the pioneer program where uh, we asked the organization or a dealer has a champion, uh, somebody besides the owner in the company leading the charge. And, and a great training program. So um, again, it's the, the biggest challenge we find for our dealers isn't necessarily that the customer, the, the end customer, the homeowner um, does or doesn't want it. It's, it's very often the biggest challenge is, is, is internal. It's just this mental sort of leap or gap between the way things have always been done. If, they, if you've been giving away support and your customers have gotten used to getting it for free, the moment where you sort of start to change those behaviors or try to change them uh, becomes tough. And so again, with, with doing that, uh, I took 
our most challenging customer. And, and if, you're, if you're tuning in as, a, as an integrator, I want you to picture your, your highest drama customer. The, the customer is going to text you at 3 a.m. and ask you to bring them a pink camel and put it in their living room because this stuff doesn't work and they paid all this money. So, so I took that customer for us and, and had them subscribe to, to, to Paracel. To try to break uh, it, to see if our, you could break uh, yeah. your delivery. And I had them do it using the page on our website that we have set up to do this, which thanks to you guys, we have a partnership with your company to, for, you, for you to help um, our dealers get this set up. So thanks to One Firefly for that. Um, so they, I, I, I figured if, if this guy would go through our uh, this website and put in his credit card info and sign up, if he would do it, then anybody would do it. And, and so the second, and this was a few years back, but the second I saw him do that, I knew that this, this was going to be all right. This, this was going to go great. And so the, the, and, the, and I think the other fun part about it is our partnership. So, so I come at it from the, the perspective of, you know, I've built a lot of the back office. Ted's an engineer. Ted built the blueprint. He runs the day to day. He's our director of operations. Greg is an amazing communicator, evangelist, super passionate about the concept. Comes comes at this from his background with Eagle Century, having built sixteen thousand security accounts. So, pretty pretty cool group. There's a question here uh, from Brian Mosley. He says, "Is there any limitation on support for control systems?" No, we 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 support. Crosstron dealers, Savant dealers, Elon dealers, Control 4 dealers. Uh, it, it's fairly agnostic. How do you, and, I'm just curious as a, as a business owner, how do you, or how do you, how have you built a team able to service all of those brands? Like, how do you, how do you do that? How, how are you keeping everyone up to speed? Are you hiring them with that skill set? Are you running them through ongoing trainings? What are you doing to keep them sharp across all this? I mean, cause you're quote unquote, potentially you're going to experience everything on yeah. the support side. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, our, uh, 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 there's a comment here. Chris says there's apparently a 12 week lead time on pink camels. So, uh, just putting that out I, there. Hey, I know a guy, I know <laughs> a guy, Chris. It's all about so, who, you know, I got a camel guy. So you got a camel no, guy. with the, with, with our hiring, and this is probably something where we could have gone a different route, but we just didn't. Our whole model is, uh, is for integrators by integrators. And so as a result, uh, the folks who are answering the answering the phone, who are handling these support tickets, they're integrators. Uh, some of them are hired from Livewire. Some were hired from Eagle Century. Some were hired from... Sierra, we have people out of Definitive. I think we hired somebody out of Audio Visions, right? And so, and those are our just those, those are our W two folks. And then we have our certified dealer program, which is exciting because you know down the road you imagine this model where you're a dealer, and well, one second you're you're receiving help. You're going to crowdsource tech support from the home office. The next second, what are you doing? Your techs who have the ability to log in for a second, what can what are they going to do? They're certified, so they're going to help defray those uh, those support inquiries. So that it's a community, it's a community, and I mean, I see some of my brothers and sisters here on your chat stream. Yeah, Justin, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, with, I'm gonna, Justin I'm gonna... with yeah, Justin with Twilight. He's on. He's a dealer. I mean. Signed our first guy. three Paracel accounts yeah. this week. Good job, Justin. Yeah. So it's that was for us. We didn't want to lose sight of the the culture of the, the community that allowed this ha to happen. Really, which was the pro source community, probably. And and I'm not saying this this is because maybe it's pro source or not, but it's it's this close knit group uh, that that came about because we've all gone to these events for a lot of years together and built trust 
and shared ideas. And I mean, Ron, you've been in the room with, with a lot, you know, teaching us along the way. So that, uh, the notion of community allowed this to happen. So we were, this is, we want to continue to extend that. You just broke news recently. I want to say in the last week or two that uh, you partnered or uh, there was a partnership formed between you and Bravis. Can you fill in? Like, what was that vetting process like? Was that a big win? It, it, I've seen it in the press. We, we're we very excited about the Bravis, the, the Bravis announcement. And again, where why does why does something like that come about? Bravis is.